Okay, so we'll continue our discussion on functions. So yesterday, as I said, uh, we discussed about function which takes input values and which returns values. So now there's not much to talk about on the return uh, part, okay? Whatever we saw yesterday, that is it, okay? Either you return or you don't return. You can return multiple values, okay? So, okay, so that's fine. On the input parameters, there are different types, okay? Even, you know, even on input, there are multiple types of input functions. And that's what we're going to see today. Okay, so um, first type is, um, and if you remember yesterday, what we did is the same. What we did, what we did yesterday is the first type, which is called um, required positional arguments. Okay, so if I define a function like um, sum, and I say a comma b, okay. Or I would instead of sum, let me put calculate. Calculate a comma b, okay, and then I say sum equal to a plus b, diff equal to a minus b, mul equal to a into b, div equal to a by b, and I say return a sorry not a sum comma diff comma mul comma div right so what uh, we just wrote a function okay called calculate and it takes two input parameters a comma b and it performs some set of steps and it returns sum diff mul and div right so now i have to use it so what i can do is I have to, so this is called function definition, right? Function definition. So now if I call this file, nothing will get executed, okay? Because we have no command actually. Command is coming now. Here I'm going to say result equal to cal calculate, okay, 10 comma, 20 or 10 comma 30. Now I can say addition of given two values is since output will be in which format? Output will be in which format? Do you remember? List. List. Tuple. Okay. It will be in tuple format. Yes. So I can say result, but anyway, to read, okay, it doesn't matter whether it's list, tuple, or uh, list or tuple, right, for now. So I'll say zero, because zero is giving us sum, isn't it? So now when I run it, you say you get 40 here, okay, addition of given two values, okay, R, right? Or is, I think, is is correct, okay? So addition of given two values is... Uh, 10 plus 30, 40, correct? Now, here you see, it has two arguments. It, the function takes two arguments, a comma b. So, when I give two values here, a takes what? And you can print it here, okay? Here I can say print value of a is comma a print value of b is b right and now when you run it you can see a takes 10 b takes 30 because okay a will go to here the first value left to right matching okay so a is the leftmost variable and 10 is the leftmost number right so a will take 10 and b will take 30 so there are two important concepts here okay which we call it as first is your required argument and positional argument. <clears throat> it's called required because since it takes, um, you know, it has A and B, we have to pass two values to it. Okay. You have to pass um, two values to it. 
ओके यस और नो म्यूट राइट ओके सो ओके सो वन थिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड सो इट हैज ए एंड बी सो यू हैव टू गिव टू वैल्यूज हियर सेकेंड थिंग इज पोजिशनल ओके दैट मीन्स ए विल टेक ओनली टेन एंड बी विल टेक ओनली थर्टी यू कैन नॉट गिव थर्टी टू ए एंड टेन टू बी बाई पासिंग लाइक दिस of course what you can do is you can change it 30 here and 10 here then now a will get 30 and we will get 10 right so okay this is normal function this is what we did yesterday okay very similar now we have to modify this function so that it is no longer required and it is no longer following that position okay so there are tricks to it okay so one is normal function where it is required and positional you have to give two values okay otherwise the program will not run so here i'm saying a b and if i just give 10 here okay and if i run it program will not run error missing one required positional argument see it says one required positional required because it is required and you are not giving second it is it has to be on second place okay and you are not giving any value to place two correct so that's why we say required positional now next function we'll see how this required requirement is gone okay okay why because you know not always we want all the values to be given right so how do we handle that so i'm going to take same example here okay i'm going to say control c and i say control v okay so i was saying that here okay i'm passing only one value so it's going to give me error okay because it says uh, one required positional argument b is missing now why because see we gave one value so left to right matching a got the value 30 but b did not get correct right? so now i'm going to create another function called calculate one and this is called okay default argument here okay let's say um there situation right where uh, you know uh, if values um um uh, um where um uh, where there's some default values okay so in the sense <laughs> uh, let's say you you have a office where 90% of your employees sit in one location okay um and 10% people probably those are sales people they are in different location so now when you hire more people to your team very likely they will be in that same location right let's say if mumbai is your head office mumbai is where 90% of employees will sit correct now in that case instead of asking uh, you know user to input city what you can say is you can say that okay if you do not enter city by default it's going to be mumbai so i'm going to say b equal to 50 where in the function definition so when we talk about default argument we are talking about function definition okay so i'm saying b equal to 50 now when i say b equal to 50 okay b got the default value 50 and a okay is still expecting the value so a is your required positional argument and b has become your default one so in this case if i don't give value for okay let me copy this and paste it here and i'm going to say calculate one now this is going to throw error so let me give some value here and in calculate one okay when you run it see you get 80 
Why? Value of B has been read as 50 when we have not given the value. Okay. Now, if we give the value to it, okay, then it's going to take the value here. So if I say 20 or maybe let's say 5, it will take the value 5. Okay. 5. Okay, so if you give, the default value is ignored. But when you don't give, okay, it is going to take the the value, uh, okay, the, the default value. Okay, if you give, then it is like positional only. Okay, but it's not mandatory, that's what it says. It is positional, but it's not, it's no longer required now. Right, because required is without equal to in that function definition. Clear? Right? And now let's say if I take same example and I don't pass the value five. So in this case, A will take value 30 and we are not passing value for B, correct? So mm -hmm. B will take value, whatever we have given as the default one, which is 50 in this case. Okay, so it will take 50 here. And of course, when you run it, 50 plus 30, you get 80. So this is how you can give default one. You can have multiple number, okay? I just gave an example uh, where you have one um, required and one default. But still, it is positional. First value will go to A. Second value will only, if if available, will go to B. Right? Now, you can have multiple um, uh, variables. You can have A, B, C, D, E, where A is required, B is required, C, D, E, F are all default. Now, you see... Default values will always be on the right side of the required values. You cannot make here A as default, okay, and B mandatory or required. Because if B is required, you have to anyway pass two values, right? It's positional, right? So first value will go to A, second only will go to B. So you will have to pass to B, correct? So if you have to pass second value for B, then there is no point of adding A, correct? So your uh, default value will always be on the right, not on the left, because of the positional thing. Clear? Okay. So, you know, we started with required positional and we, uh, you know, we saw how we can uh, handle required. Okay. We are giving default values. Now we'll see how we can make position not important. Okay. Now, to make position non-important, that is non-positional. Okay. You don't have to make any changes in the function definition. You have to make changes in the way you call it. Okay. So here you see it is A and B. Same variable name I can use here. B equal to 30 and A equal to 5. Okay. So I am saying B equal to 30 and A equal to 5. Okay. I am not using the position or what you call I'm using the variable name instead. Okay. So in this case, A will, irrespective of the position of A, okay, you will have A equal to 5. Even though we are putting A in second position, since we are using the variable names, okay, it is going to be A equal to 5. And when you run it, you see, A is 5, B is 30. Right? So it has ignored the position. Okay. So you can do this way. 
this is how you ignore the position and instead use um, you know um, variable names to pass the values okay the last type of function okay that we will discuss here is called variable name name arguments okay now here whatever be it if you have two va two variables at max you are passing two variables only now i'm going to say that how we can have multiple values for the same variable okay so let's say i define um, def my calculation okay and here i say a comma b comma c so when you say a comma b comma c that means i am taking three variables right three required variables and i'll simply print i'll not do anything i'll say a equal to a okay okay now let's say i'm calling this function five six seven right this is for first type where you're passing first value to a second to b third to c so seven will go to c now let's say i want to i don't know how many values are there they you know uh you can the when you're passing you can pass any number of values let's say for example print right Sometimes we don't pass anything to the function. Sometimes we pass multiple values, right? Uh, comma, one more value, comma, one more, so on. In such case, okay, you have to make this, okay, here in function definition, you have to make changes to make such values acceptable. So if you have my calculation A, okay, simply like this, it is required if you make one single star if you put one single star i see i'm putting star here not anywhere else now this can accept multiple values in tuple format so when you run it okay so c is required positional okay for a minute let me delete c we'll come back to c in some time let me delete c now what happened is five went to A, okay, and the rest of the values went to B. You see that? I can add yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can keep on adding the values. You will, you know, all these values will go to B. Right? Because I made A mandatory, so A comes here. I can put C here. Okay, C is also mandatory. So C will take value 6. And then 7, 8, 9 will go to B. Okay, so it can take any number of values. So when you give single star, okay, single star takes multiple values. Now you can have a double star also. You can say, double star d okay double star b takes your non-positional or we call it as keyword argument okay so non-positional here non-positional it is called as keyword argument it depends upon the keywords okay so here everything will go to b Okay, if you are passing keyword argument, okay, so for example, name equal to Sachin, okay, runs equal to 5000. Now, these are your keyword arguments, okay, variable name, colon, uh, sorry, variable name, comma, value, variable name, comma, value. These will be read in D as a dictionary. 
Oh, sorry. What happened? Here I gave C only, right? It should be D. See that? So this is how you can read multiple values. You can read multiple values, uh, like multiple single values, or you can read multiple keyword values as well. Clear? Okay. Okay. Now let's write a program, okay, uh, to to check if a number is prime or not. So we'll write a function, okay, and the function will take input a value. It will check if it is prime or not, right, and returns back to the main saying it is prime or not prime. Okay, so I will write a function called def check prime it will take a value a right and then it will return true or false okay i'm going to add the logic later but just i'm just creating a dummy function which is returning true now here i'm going to say result equal to okay check prime and you pass value Okay, if result is true, right, then you say print it's a prime number, else print it's not a prime number. Correct? So I have written a dummy function here, which returns true, and I'm checking if it's true, then it's a prime number. So in this case, since it's dummy, you will always get the prime number, right? Even if you get one zero one one zero zero, also you get a prime, right? Now I will go and check. So this is what a function is all about, right? Now here it's all about the logic that you would do to any program, right? So what I'll do, I'll I will say result equal to true only. I'll assume that number that you are sending me is prime. And the moment I find oh, it's not a prime, then that's when I will make it as false. Okay. By default, I'm going to set it as result. And of course, I'll do result here. So now. So if, just one question. Yeah. Uh, you said if result here, right? In the if statement. Correct. We, what, so, what is result? Re I mean, we, tell we me what is result. Do... I mean, we gave the return value as a result in the def uh, defining our own function. It can be anything, though. It can be here. See, you are again asking me what we did on day one. Tell me. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, That's I, okay. Sorry. No, no, not sorry. You have to ask if you don't understand. My point is, you have not, uh, you know, you are asking something which we have discussed. But that doesn't mean that you should not ask. Uh, okay. We we yeah. did not do true function in if statement. I think we did it only in the while. Loop. I told you we can say huh? anything. No? See, where is if function? No, no. In the if else condition, conditional statement. Ah. Conditional statement. What did we say? The conditional statement results should be either true or false. Right? Mm -hmm. See, condition also it has to be true or false. If true, then only it will go in uh, if. Otherwise, it will not go to if. That's what we discussed. Mm -hmm. See, if, if the condition is true, only then it will yeah. go inside if. Yes. If condition is false, it will not go inside this. So ultimately, you are evaluating it to true or false only, not anything else. That's why we say if condition. Condition is always resulting into either if or, uh, sorry, either true or false. Yeah, sorry, actually. No problem. Okay. So at least the structure flow you understood? Yeah. Okay. So we are checking check prime and check prime is result is turning us the result. True or false. And now we are printing is prime or not in the main function, in the calling function, not in the function definition. Where we are calling, there we are printing it. Now uh, writing the logic, you know, completing this program is all about the logic now. 
So what I'll do is I'm going to say for, okay, um, for I in range two comma A minus one. Okay, in fact, A equal by two will also do. So I'm saying start from two, okay, and go up to A by five, A by two. So if A is uh, 10, you, you are going up to five. If A is 11, also going up to five. Between 2 and 5, it should not be divisible by any other number. Between 2 and 5, it should not be divisible by any other number. That's what it means, okay? So, for i in range 2, comma a by 2, okay? If a divided by i, okay? That means 5 divided, you know, 10 divided by 2, if it equal to 0, you are... Uh, sorry, okay. Now I have to check if it is perfectly divisible or not. So how do I check if it is perfect divisible or not? I have to divide by number and see if the remainder is zero. If remainder is zero, that means that number is perfect divisible, right? I want to check if ten is divisible two or not. If ten is divisible by two or not, so what I'll do? I'll do ten by two and check the Remainder. If remainder is 0, that means it is divisible, isn't it? So I'm going to say if a modulo i equal to 0, that means it is divisible by 0. True, then I will result will be set to false. That means it is not divisible and you can simply break from here. Okay, you can simply break from here. That means, see, what is prime number between, it should be divisible only by one and itself. No other number should be able to divide it. The moment you know that it is divisible by something else other than one and itself, that's when you should end your checking. There's no need to proceed further, isn't it? So I'm checking A divisible by I. Okay, I is your between two, because every number is divisible by one, so you don't, no need to check with one. From two to half of the value. Okay, if it is 500, up to, I'm checking up to 250. If it is 501, also I'm checking to 250. So between two and 250, it should not be divisible by any other number. With me? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, so this is how your... Uh, Mm. Um, you know, you can use this. Now, you can ask me why not we are printing here itself? Why are we going printing in the main? Okay, so when you are creating a function, you should keep in mind that make it more generic. Okay, because more generic functions will be used in multiple places. Okay, there may be a situation where you may not want to um, print, you might want to do something else. So, for example, you know, same program, I will say I want to print using same function. I can generate prime numbers between 500 and 1000. Let's say between 500 and 1000, I want to generate prime numbers. So, what I'll do, I'll say prime number as a list, empty list. Okay. Now, I will say if, okay, if check prime. Now, before doing that, I'll create a for loop for i in range, okay, between 500 to 1000, it says, right? So I'll put 500, comma, 1000 plus 1. That's when it will go up to 1000, isn't it? In range. So this is going to generate 500 to 1000. I will check. Okay, if i is prime or not. So if it is true, okay, if it is true, then I'm going to simply say prime num dot append. Append what? i. That's it. Okay, now when loop is done, it's going to take 500, 501, 502, 503, 504, so on, each number from the loop and pass it to check prime. Check prime will return either true or false, true or false, true or false. If it is true, append it. False, ignore it. 
okay so now you can generate you can say print okay prime numbers are okay and you can say prime number here okay so see these are the prime numbers between 500 and 1000 okay so since we made it generic i'm able to use it for both generating prime numbers and checking prime numbers if i had printed here no it is prime it is not prime then i could not have used it for this isn't it so it is returning you true and false now it's up to you what do you want to do you want to save it you want to print it do whatever so the function should be it sh the logic should be implemented correctly and it should be as generic as possible so that you know you can use it for multiple reasons so in this case when i'm just written true and false i could use it in both the cases otherwise i couldn't have used in both the cases yes or no mm -hmm. so this is an example of function okay